we thank you again tonight, Angel Session, for reminding us through that song, listen, that we need to learn how to put our problems in God's hands. And we say good evening to you, my precious and faithful listeners. This is Pastor Virginia Singleton, also known as Pastor V of Divine Church of Deliverance out of Florence, South Carolina, broadcasting live every Thursday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time by way of Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Broadcasting Radio Station out of Baltimore, Maryland. And before we go any further, let us take a moment and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come again to say thank you for another opportunity to share with the listeners of the virtual studio that's out there listening to this word. We pray that their lives are touched through this word and that their heart is transformed and turned to you. We pray that something is said tonight, O Heavenly Father, and that they will hear something that they were listening for and that they have been seeking a word for their situation to know that you are there and that you are answering the prayer that they have been praying. We thank you for answered prayer and that they will have an encounter with a God moment this night. We thank you for allowing this servant to serve you in such a way. And we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. And this thy servant say amen. Again, we welcome you all to the Transforming Lives Bible Radio Show where you can hear a word from the Lord that will change and transform your life. Well, our topic tonight is, do you want to get well? Our supported scripture text will come tonight from the gospel according to John, chapter 5, verses 2 through 8. And our key verse will be verse 6. And we will read the text for you. Again, John chapter 5, beginning at verse 2. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped and was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. My, 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 my. What a word, what a word, what a word. Again, the question comes, do you want to get well? Well, Jesus had come to Jerusalem during one of the yearly feasts, which was attended 
by thousands from throughout Israel. While there, he visited a marketplace called Bethesda, or House of Mercy, which was actually a pool near the Sheep Gate in the northeastern section of the city. It contained five different porches where a multitude of impotent, or shall we say, sick and diseased people waited for that certain time of the year when the angel would come down and trouble the waters. It was believed that the first one that would go in the water after it was troubled would be healed. I'm inclined to believe that some of us who are listening tonight, we too are waiting for God to trouble the waters in our life. Why? Because we have some impotence of sin that is causing us to be sick tonight. That we need peace in our life. But the question also comes us do we really want to get well? Do we really want to be healed? Do we really want to change? Do we really want to give up? That thing in our life that is getting in our way that's causing us not to get in the water. Well, on this particular day, when Jesus decided to visit the pool, there was a particular man, the Bible didn't call him by his name, there was a particular man who was there. And the Bible said that this particular man had been carried down to the pool for 38 years. Now, that's a long time to be carried to your blessing, yet not receive your blessing, to come that close to change in your life, yet not be able to receive your change. But at least this man was at the threshold of his change. He was carried to that pool for 38 years. The Bible did not say whether or not why this man was crippled. The Bible didn't give an explanation if the man was born this week. The only thing the Bible said that this man was infirmed for 38 years. But he waited by this pool for 38 years for an opportunity to get in the water. How long have some of us been waiting for our change? How long have some of you been waiting for God to trouble the water in your life? And how one thing I do know is that when Jesus shows up, nothing else is relevant anymore than the order and the protocol of everything changes when Jesus shows up into our situation. Notice, this man didn't even ask to be healed. Because when we look at our key verse, verse 6, when Jesus saw him lying there on his bed that he had been carried on for 38 years, Jesus already knew that the man had been in this situation for a long time. Jesus made the initiative to offer the man help. Jesus asked him the question, will thou be made whole? Oh, hallelujah. He's asking us the same thing tonight. Will thou be made whole? Oh? See, this man was chosen for a blessing. Some of you tonight are being chosen for a blessing. Somebody out there who is listening, you are being chosen to be changed. You are being chosen to be made well without even being asked. This man didn't ask Jesus for a blessing. He was just laying there by the pool. He didn't even bother to ask 
the Lord to heal him. Let us look at this man's response. Didn't know why he responded this way. Maybe he was shocked when the Lord asked him. Maybe he wondered, well, why he asked me this question? Why didn't he ask somebody else that's laying down here by this pool? Why did he asked me this question? Look at how the man responded unto the Lord. The man said, well, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step is down before me. You see, he never even asked nobody for any assistance to put him in the water. So now what is he doing? Is he projecting the blame that he never got in the water on somebody else? Is he blaming somebody else for his continued in complication and his incapacitation? How easy it is for us to blame it on somebody else when we don't get what we need when we never even ask for any help. But isn't it so good that we have a God like Jesus that even when we don't ask for any help, he loves us so much that he'll just bless us anyhow. I'm so glad that we have an anyhow God. Without this infirm man realizing what was happening at that moment, he was right now having an, an encounter in a God moment. He was caught up in a right now God moment, and he didn't even realize what was going on. You better thank God for every God moment that you have in your life when you don't even ask the Lord for a blessing because the Lord already knows what you need. You might not know how to put it in the word to ask the Lord for what you need, but you need to recognize tonight that God already knows what your need is. And sometimes he'll just go ahead and drop a blessing on you because he loves you just that much. Sometimes he'll just give you a God moment. And look here, because the Lord loved it, the man so much that he just decided, let me show up around this pool today and let me decide who am I going to bless today. Hallelujah. So he just spoke to the man and he said, rise, take up your bed and walk. Notice the infirm man never even made it to the water. So that says to me, it's not about the angel having to get in the water to trouble the water when Jesus shows up. It's all about being in the presence of the Lord. It's all about being in the right place at the right time. Because when Jesus shows up, the protocol changes. The circumstances change. The order of the day changes. Everything about your life will change when Jesus shows up. When you have an encounter with the master, there's no need for protocol. It does not matter what the doctor say. It doesn't matter what the doctor's report say. It doesn't matter what man say about you. What does the Lord say about you? All Jesus had to do was speak the word. And when he spoke to the man, he said, get up off of that bed you've been riding on for 38 years that you had people riding you back and forth to this pool for 38 years. He said, get up. Pick that bed up. Now you carry the bed that's been carrying you for 38 years and walk. And immediately after Jesus spoke the word, the man obeyed and immediately he was healed. Glory, glory, glory to God. I say to you today, saints, I ask you the same question that Jesus asked the impotent man. Do you want to be well? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be saved from your sin? Do you want to give up the things in life that makes you diseased and infirmed? Well, Jesus is asking you the same question tonight. 
will thou be made whole. And if you could hear him speaking to you right now, what will your answer be? What response will you give to him? Will you give an excuse like the impotent man? Will you project blame on somebody else and make excuses like the young man did and say, well, Lord, if it had not been for somebody else, if they had not said this, if they had not done that, then I would not be in this situation. Or will you just say, yes, Lord, I want to be well. Yes, Lord, I want to be made whole. That's all Jesus wants to know is that you want to change. And just in case you don't know how to ask him, know that if you just be willing, know that he is willing. All he wants to know is that you have a desire in your heart to change. Is there a desire in your heart to even be made whole? Do you want? to be well tonight. He's waiting for your answer tonight. I ask you tonight to just let us pray that he would hear even the desire of your heart, even if you can't speak the answer out of your mouth, knowing that he will hear the desires of your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now for those who are listening out there. That's under the sound of my voice. Even if they can't speak it out of their mouth, Lord, you know what's in their heart. And we ask right now, oh God, that those that is listening and that can hear my voice, turn their hearts to you, oh God. Heal their bodies. Heal their minds. Turn their hearts to you, God. Change their position. Change their situation. Transform their hearts and turn them back to you. Make them new. Make them well. Heal their diseases, and oh, Heavenly Father, whatever is in their situation and whatever may be wrong, you are the great I am, and you are the healing God that make all things right in their life. And we count it done right now in the precious name of Jesus who can do all things. In your name we claim it done right now. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Radio Land right now, we want you to remember that Transforming Lives Bible Radio Show. Remember that we are sponsored by Jerry Rose Alive Worldwide, Positive Power 21.org, and Real Christian Film. Our show can be heard on demand at Jerry Rose Alive Worldwide, Podcast Channel 14. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and also you can find me on YouTube. I pray that you were blessed by tonight's broadcast, and I hope that your life is transformed by the word of God. Angel Sessions, check us out on the great I am. It's been lovely, my friends. This is Pastor V. See you next week and good night.